Hello, this is Amy with Paper Moon Journals. I am so excited to share this Christmas coffee shop journal with you today. This was probably the fastest sale I have ever had out of my shop. It sold in like the first hour. I also sold another one recently that sold in like the first three or four hours, my candy cane Christmas one. I don't know if that one has aired yet. I do uh, film these videos in advance. You'll notice in several of the videos that I have on this blue sweatshirt. And it's because I just sat and filmed all the videos in one day. I want to be sure that you all know that I don't just live in that blue sweatshirt without washing it or something. <laughs> no, I just filmed a bunch of videos that day. But I wanted to um, also explain that since this one sold so fast, like, I, I had several people asking me, wait, where did that go? I can't find it anywhere. You know, I want that. So I made this one, uh, I made one that was almost exactly like it, number two. And then I made three and four with different houses on the cover, but I tried to use all the same stuff in there. And when I say tried to use all the same stuff, I was up to over two dozen different digital kits. And then when I was watching this video during editing, I realized that there was like three or four more that I missed in the, um, in the extra ones that I made. But no matter, they're just as cute. And I've shared those on social media. So if you want to see, you know, the details of what those look like, in all my Etsy listings, I always put a link to the video shared somewhere on social media where you can get a good look at it. Oftentimes that's TikTok because they'll let me have up to 10 minutes to share something over there. Um, I try to just take two or three, but uh, most places only give me a minute. And that's not really long enough to have a good look at it. On this house, um, I really like this coffee shop. I added some glitter snow to the roof, some rickrack, some Dresden trim, some dimensional paper flowers over the top of some illustrated flowers. And there's eight charms in this and all of the other Christmas coffee shop journals that I made. There's a look at the back and I used lace to wrap around the spine to reinforce that and make it stronger. And then I also used eyelets uh, over the holes in the front cover and black sari silk ribbon for the tie. And I can see here I used an applique flower inside the cover. That didn't happen anywhere else. The other ones all have a little Christmas ornament glued inside the front cover. And then that dolly is a tuck spot on most of them. On one of them she wasn't. But on most of the projects I did get the little Santa as the first page in each book with a little dolly in front. Um, but the stuff in the pocket isn't all the same. They all have like this, at least one of those little house tags in it. But I don't think I put the house tag in the front pocket on any of the other journals. They should all also have one of the paper dolls from her dollhouse, uh, from Pixie Dust Files dollhouse kit. Um, I had had that out when I was making this one and I thought it would be cute in there and then made sure to include those in the other projects. This house I backed on pink paper with snowflake. I didn't back a lot of the tags, I just printed them on card because it was getting so fat. So oftentimes I'll go back and back the tags later. I wait until the project's done to decide if I have room to back the tags uh, because they can get just so fat. And I do like to think that people might actually be using these. And if they get too fat, then it's just too big to actually use or write in. You would want something stiff like a writing board or to put behind each page so that the things on the pages behind, the lace or the, the dots. But I did try to keep the embellishment all around the page edges. And I use these journals myself, although I will say I don't usually embellish them this much when I'm planning on using them. This one is probably gonna be somebody's coffee table book, but I would love it if they wrote in here. This one also has some of those woodland animals that were dressed for Christmas from Forever Cute. None of the other ones had those. They were just left over from some other project and I used them up in here and then forgot all about them. As I said, I used over two dozen kits in here and I forgot to include that one. So I think it's 26, 27 different digital kits. If I had been able to remember everything, I know I used from my porch prints the uh, vintage recipes, that she had some vintage recipes, and then that same Christmas ephemera that I've been using um, all year. And then there was a pink nutcracker sweet stuff that was a tuck spot on that last page. That was from Forever Cute US. I'm showing off here some of my favorite silver lace. I think this might be the first time I've used it. 
I think I only got a yard or maybe two yards of it from the um, from Hobby Lobby and so I've been coveting that and not using that as much as I should. I had a big mess to clean up in my craft area. I craft in the living room and when I was cleaning everything up and getting it put away, it, I, every time I do that I get reminded about exactly what I have in all those little bins. These little dolls are so cute and each one of these journals that I've made has a complete set of the dolls printed out and there will be, you know, at least one each of every one of the little paper dolls and this one that will be in the other ones. What I've done is uh, fussy cut all the little dolls out and then use those to decorate various pages. So the same dolls won't always be on the same page. If I really liked the way a certain doll looked on a certain page, I would maybe repeat it in one of the other projects. But it would be kind of neat to see what you thought if you went and looked at them. When I do several, I'll do them where I think that they're very much the same. That they're so similar that I have a hard time, you know, telling apart the differences. And then it's so fun that somebody will often see just one of them and they'll like that one so much better. Part of me wonders if maybe I just did a better job on the video on that one. Because maybe I edit it down to only a minute long video or something really short. Here I am fixing a little something here. And, oh, I see what it is. I had accidentally stapled those tags into the pocket when I was um, stapling that pom-pom trim on. I like to use copper colored staples because they look really pretty and it makes using the stapler not only easier than gluing things down, but um, also pretty too. It adds some texture, some metallic shine, that copper colored. I'll use multiple staples on there. Especially when you're trying to staple down pom-pom. It's hard to get it on there with one try. And then here's some of those vintage recipes. You'll be able to read some of the recipes and make some of the things. Some of the other recipes seem like they're missing the back side or more information. And um, I really like this bird charm that came in there. I think I said, or I hope I said, there's eight charms in here. I accidentally forgot to turn my mic on for my first voiceover attempt on this project. And it was a shame because I had some really good banter, I thought, going. But whatever, it's fun to do it again. I'll be doing this all day. You know, I those all the videos I filmed wearing this sweatshirt will be edited on the same day that I'm editing this video and then I'll schedule them out over the, you know, the next couple weeks. I really like the way all the trim layers up and how you can see those black pom-pom peeking out from behind the pink trim. Here's a little tip in where you have a, like a secret writing space where you could put a picture on one side and then write about it to the left there. There's lots of writing space in here if you wanted to use it for writing. There's some blank recipes. I thought with the, the little girl holding cupcakes and all the little girls with their treats and the Christmas coffee shop, um, that a baking journal, that, that, you know, to make it kind of a baking or cooking journal too. So um, that's why I put the blank recipes and all the recipe stuff. I think I did forget to mention that. This is a full sheet of journaling paper from, um, that's the Forever Cute US. She had multiple of like little kitty Christmas kitties and Christmas dogs that were so cute. And um, that's, I think I got two of the kitty cat kits and then one of the dog kits, but there was just so much there. It was hard to choose from. I spent a pretty penny on at that shop and thank you so much to everybody who's bought from my Etsy shop. As always, I'm only able to buy so many cool things and supplies to use because of people buying from my shop. Uh, one of the things I really love is this holly print. It's from the um, Vintage Christmas from Pixie Dust Files. I think it's a 2021 kit. She just came out with a, some similar new ones that will coordinate beautifully with that 2021 kit if you already have it. But that holly page that we were just looking at was one of my favorite papers. Um, this little piece of ephemera here was from a cooking kit ephemera and I just thought that little girl with her little tea party for her rocking horse toy was so cute. I picked that up so you could get a better look. And then um, then there's some of that cooking ephemera. There's an angel cake recipe and pictures of some pretty little desserts there. And then some more of the, those desserts look great. I just love how that looks. I'm glad I gave you a, a cl nice close look at that. Then some blank um, recipe cards, more blank cards. And then this tag that I made there. Um, 
that fits into the pocket. I like the way she peeks out from behind the cooking tags and things, but you could kind of put her wherever. And um, like I said, I've made a few of these and so they'll all have um, these Graphic 45 tags. I didn't mention that. The tag base for this is one of those standard size Graphic 45 tags. And I love to buy them, but then I'm like too stingy to use them. So I bit the bullet and I'm using two of them in each one of these projects to use those up. I don't know if it's like cooking or something. Maybe they seem nicer or better quality because I didn't have to make them myself. They might not be any better than my handmade ones, but it seems like they are because I bought them, I guess. I don't know. A lot of them did come in uh, monthly card club kits. I used to subscribe to that and then I would get the tags and as I said, be too stingy to use them and then just kind of collect and collect. Uh, one of the many kits that I forgot to put in the additional uh, journals that I made was these Sam Poole images with those Christmas photos. I just love that duck with the crown on it and the stars in the background. It's just such a charming, charming uh, photograph that somebody staged there. Really neat. Here's one of uh, my favorite charms. I'm running low on these. I keep using them in every project that I make because they're so pretty. But they do look much prettier on the projects than they do just sitting in the little bin of charms, you know. So there's that. I just don't want to run out. That's the thing. I like using them, but then I don't want to run out. What if I can't get more? I'll never have them again. FOMO. Serious FOMO. I think that's what drives some of my hoarding. I like those white pom-poms. When I first ordered them, they were a lot bigger than what I originally wanted. I wanted the small ones like the black pom-pom, but actually now it worked out nice that I have the two different sizes. I like the way the two different sizes look. We're at the center of this single signature. This has 64 pages and um, should have lots of room for writing. One of the main kits that I used for the background of these projects was the Shabby Pink Christmas by My Porch Prince. And then to that, I added, I'm not sure what I'm describing there. <laughs> Sorry about that. But to that, I added some embroidered flower trim that I had that comes in a roll and then glued that down onto some of the images. I felt like those embroidered flowers matched the design of the paper so well that every one of those projects has some of those embroidered flowers. Oh, lucky me, it looks like I'm actually talking about them here in the video, not just in the voiceover. Yeah, when I was filming this video, I don't remember what happened, but I know I started talking to somebody about halfway or more than halfway through the video and then realized, okay, I'm just gonna have to mute this and do a voiceover because we don't want that conversation. Uh, in the video. It had nothing to do with crafting and surely was very boring. Groceries, you know, nothing anybody cares to hear about. So yep, there's one of my favorite charms on here too. I say my favorite. All of my new charms are my favorites. That one with the glass ball that looks like it's full of gumballs. I just whooshed right by that in this flip through. But um, here we are to another tag. This tag that I made, I put the pom-pom on the bottom so she doesn't fit in a pocket. So I decorated this cute, um, I think it's called a bulldog clip or a bull nose clip, something like that. A bull something clip. And, um, and I added a lace bow to that and then the charm to make that look prettier. And then that just clips it onto the page. You can remove the clip and, you know, use the tag as a bookmark or whatever you wanted. You could also use the clip as a bookmark by just clipping it to the top of the page like that. Um, but there it is. You just use it as a bookmark in the middle of the book. I do that a lot with my tags, just to show what page I'm on. I do use my journals. I have one I need to finish up before the end of this year, and then a new one that I made over the summer that I'll be starting next year with, a nice fairy one. I was really um, excited about how somebody asked, hey, you know, where are all your tutorials? And it reminded me I haven't done any tutorials for a while. So I'm going to work on trying to do some tutorials, say maybe one a month. And I have a nice project set aside to do like a craft with me. Uh, one person asked to see a start to finish journal project and I have all this stuff to do another fairy project it's similar to the one I made for myself and um, I have that all set aside and ready so I want to do that and then I had somebody else ask me about some scrapbooking tutorials I haven't done any scrapbooking tutorials or even flip throughs or anything scrapbooking for a while it's been all junk journals um, 
since Halloween, since I started on the Halloween junk journals. And then now straight to Christmas. I did the fall journals when I was doing Halloween. So um, I do have a couple of fall journals. And they're still available in my shop, which is kind of cool. And I'm having a sale. It's 20% off anything $100 or more. I thought that would help out um, if you wanted to buy some less expensive Christmas gifts. I have some things in there for $20 or $30. And so if you wanted to pick up a few things, that would get you over $100. And then there's uh, also some things in my shop that I marked down 25%. So you could actually double discount if you picked the things that were on sale as well. Um, but yeah, there's some things that have been in the shop for a year. I'm tired of looking at them. <laughs> just kidding. But um, but I'd like to see them go to their new home and not just be stored in a tub waiting, waiting to be bought. So yeah, here we are. We're continuing the flip through. Um, I'm not sure if I did already, but I just wanted to make sure that I thank everybody who uh, likes and comments on my videos and watches my videos. I really appreciate that. Or leaves comments like the people who asked about the tutorials. Don't be shy. If there's something you'd like to see or a video you'd like to watch, I'd really appreciate that. I know I'm kind of nose to the grindstone trying to keep my shop stocked for Christmas, but um, I do. I really appreciate that. And I like doing the tutorials. They just don't... Um, generally get very many views. You know, I'll spend weeks preparing, you know, I'll spend way more time doing the videos than these flip through videos. And then they might only get, you know, 20 or 30 views. <laughs> and then that feels pretty sad when these videos, which don't take nearly the amount of time or effort to prepare, you know, will qu pretty quickly get one or 200 views. Um, you know so anyways but if people ask I'll do it I just uh, I just didn't know if anybody still wanted to see those so these tags I made with one of my favorite tools it's of course on my Amazon tools list it's my tag top punch yes it was a great investment I don't really have a budget for craft supplies or tools in my day job I'm an accountant and a bookkeeper and so staying on budget or, or being mindful of my spending is really important and especially with that you know the cost of living you know it has gotten so expensive to keep the gas on and to run the heat that's why I'm wearing this sweatshirt in all of those videos is because it's cold in here I keep the thermostat set to 60 degrees although we're lucky here in California it stays pretty warm and it's usually like 64 65 in here but for me that's pretty cold so I'll be wearing maybe even a jacket over the sweatshirt depending on if it gets over 60 or not but I'm showing off some of that pretty pink crocheted lace. I know that's on my Amazon supply list. Another tool that I feel like was a really good investment or was money well spent, that tag top punch, you know, I have used that. That was definitely money well spent. I love that tool and I can't stop talking about it. So there's that. The other one is my tab punch. Both of those have made my life so much easier when it comes to finishing these projects. Instead of trying to fussy cut the tabs out um, from printed digital kits, I can just punch them out of my scraps. It helps me with my scrap busting and helps to make them coordinate with my project. I just love that. Those two punches. Those are like my best purchases of 2023 or like those two, uh, those two tools and they'll be on my tools list. There's a lot of stuff that was new to me again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody who's bought at my shop. Um, I was able to get the rickrack trim and a lot of new lace and the pom-pom trim. I bought a bunch of Christmas charms and it has just been so nice that I've had some money to get some of these things that I've really wanted and been thinking about for a long time. And if you're just getting started, don't worry. You don't have to have all the stuff. Your things will still be beautiful. Here I am, I've been doing it, you know, going on five years now. And, uh, and I've just now got those tools myself. So yes, I added lace to the page edges. I know that's not on my Amazon supply list. That came in a spool of 50 yards and was pretty affordable. It's actually a double, tr uh, double lace and I cut it into two strips. So I get a hundred yards out of every roll of lace. This little doll here was so cute with the recipe tucked behind her arm. I made sure that in every journal project, she was tucked behind the, the tucked behind the arm there. 
Another thing that I got new this year that I think I also used in this project was some flat backs. I got some gold flat backs, some silver, and some black ones. I had liked using the ones that came with the G45 on the tag, but um, after paying for shipping and everything, it was going to be like $20 for just maybe 18 of the flat backs. So um, I need to add those to my Amazon supply list. If you're interested in that, please mention it in the comments below um, if that's not on there yet. Um, here's some things I'm showing that were just laying around on my desk that I used to make these tags uh, using that tag top punch. That little boy, he'd been laying around since I made fairy journals over the summer and uh, I just kept thinking, he'll get used, he'll get used. So yep, this was finally his day. He got used on this project. And um, to keep them similar, they all have these those same images that are made into pockets that hold these long tags. That cute little girl with the tree, she's in every one. And then um, here's inside the back cover. They all have these kitty cat paper that I printed out on card and then rounded the corners. Oh, like I said already, a lot of these things aren't backed because the project was just getting so thick already. Here's a cute little paper doll and I show how you could use some of the dolls glued down yourself or to add more interest or to continue decorating the pages. And then here's some of the recipes that I printed out. They were from a My Porch Prints uh, recipe kit. And then that little Christmassy envelope is um, from Amity Bloom that she did quite a few years back. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And don't be shy. If there's something you'd like to see more of, please comment below. Um, I'd love to hear that. It really does make my day. Oh, and look, I even remembered to show you what's in the envelope this time. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I almost signed off without telling you that I was so excited to get the design team post for Twisted Paper Studios. Thank you so much, Donna. So I will be on the uh, Twisted Paper Studios design team and you can look forward to a project every Monday for her Merry Monday on TikTok and then one project a month here on YouTube. So I have come up with some really exciting ideas for that. There will definitely be some tutorials there. It won't be all flip throughs with the Twisted Paper Studios projects. So anyways, I would just wanted to thank you all again if you stuck by for the second little last thing. Thank you, thank you, and still have a wonderful day. Thanks again. Bye!